Here we are with Fred Bell. Fred, what are some of the symptoms of electronic harassment? Well, there's a bunch of them, and there's also environmental symptoms, too. But just a few are sleep deprivation, fatigue, but malaise, irritability, shortening of the attention span, daytime fatigue attacks I see on a lot of people, on older people, cataracts, blood, blood changes, uh, circulatory programs, permanent deterioration of the central nervous system. Another one is very common is, is, is blurred vision and loss of concentration, whole body jerks, shaking of the body, heat flashes, artificial fever, shortness of the breath, loss of control of the vocal cords, which is because of that radar flashlight studies, that kind of stuff, uh, 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 unusual forgetfulness, things like that, uh, and, and se- sexual, sudden sexual urges, uh, suicidal and homicidal thoughts, panic attacks. And the biggest one that I see of all in, in the people I do is, is some form of depression and, and extreme paranoia. I see that. And, in, in, and sometimes in the, in the environment around the uh, a targeted person, some people out there I know are going to relate to this, is a stoppage of power to appliances, manipulation of appliance settings, temporary failures that fix themselves, movements hmm. of objects that's off and off the shelf, under the floor causing breakage, precision and manipulation of switches and controls, uh, premature failure of, of appliances and computer failures and errors. That's just some of the stuff uh, that goes on. I mean, it, it, it does affect the environment, if, especially if they're doing the millimeter wave stuff, you know, which is a common delivery system. What is confusion weaponry, Fred? Well, confusion weaponry is, it was basically um, brought about several years ago um, where we were using uh, thoughts to, uh, you know, frequencies that, 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 that mess up the thinking system of the body. Okay, this was the original, how it really all started. Later on, it got... Uh, there were different devices developed um, that were neurostimulators from a distance. Uh, the, the, I remember in the very beginning, uh, they, they were developing devices where they had a control, you know, an implant in your head, and then it was, you, know, you, you, you would see the effect of, the, of it in your head. Later on, it became remote control, and now it's done in a difference, al- almost on a quantum level. And it's, it's basically impulses that are sent to the body that cause that person to go into some confusion state. A good example of that, a good example of that was just recently. That lady that was on the news the other night, a little blonde girl, you might have seen this, it was about a week ago. Oh, the one who had the, the uh, they, they, not a stroke, but they think something happened to her. Yeah. She had some kind of severe migraine, they said. Yeah, they, they, and she never ever had a migraine before. That, that to me, is, is, is probably they targeted her just to see what it would happen while she was on the air. Because there were no symptoms afterwards, there was no damage to her body, no neurological damage or any, even symptoms. That's confusion weaponry, and, and that was a good example. I was really surprised to see them pull that out of their hat and immediately, you know, apply that so quickly, but it did. I mean, they, That was one of the strangest videos I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, the, 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 the founder, the, the, the term uh, uh, Confusion weaponry came directly, originally from Dr. Ross Ade, who was a, a formerly of the Brain Research Center at the University of Southern California, and he was he, he worked at Loma Linda, and he was he was uh, uh, worked on the Pandora project, which is part of that stuff that was with the Soviets bomb, uh, bombarding us, and it, and it, and it was his, his definition was specific behavior modifications of electromagnetic means, and 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 the chemical. Part of it. now, there's chemistry involved here, and that causes what's a, a call a calcium efflux. Okay, and this this is usually from the microwave side of it, and and when this this calcium e- efflux happens, it throws out the blood pressure rates. And because remember, calcium ions are necessary to make the heart beat through through the atriums of the heart. If you interfere with that, you start getting uh, 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 voids in the brain, lack of oxygen in the brain, and so the blood pressure uh, starts to uh, to, to, to go up or down, and, and, and that causes a panic attack. So you can see how that goes into a panic attack. And if it goes into a panic attack, then that person's going to run down, you know, if it happens more than once, then they're going to run to Big Pharma for some drugs, some SSRI drugs or something, which brings the drug industry on board. But, I mean, that's the kind of stuff that goes on, and this was going back, this, you know, this, was, this goes back to the 60s, okay? And then in the 80s, um, Dr. Aday uh, demonstrate how a 147 uh, megahertz field with a power level of just 0.8 milliwatts per square centimeter causes this calcium influx. And then what happens is 
they used 147 megahertz carrier, and they modulate it down to 6 to 20 hertz, which is ELF. And the heart likes to beat. I think the heart beats somewhere around uh, 8.1 or 8.2 hertz. So, and it's very easy to overpower, you know, the, the human body only generates about 20 millivolts, the average person in the brain sending it down through the central nervous system, which then has to be distributed through all the electrical factions of the body, which is everything. So it's not, it doesn't take much with a, with a you know, a small millimeter beam to interfere with that delicate process of the human being. And because when you go to that millimeter wavelength stuff, which is considered between 30 and three, uh, 300 uh, uh, gigahertz, that makes it pencil beam, like laser-like technology that once a person's zeroed in on from all of these things we've been discussing about voice and speech patterns and, and you know, listening to them on the computer and the phone and all of that, it's no problem to zero in with two pencil beams on that person and do all kinds of disruptive things, including introduce a audio component between the two small millimeter wavelength beams, which has an audio component. And people then hear themselves, somebody's talking in their head. And, and some of the people I've talked to say, they, you know, one lady in specific, I remember, she said, I could hear the, it was in the control room. I mean, I could hear people in the background talking, and these voices are in my head. And this is very unusual. And then this is the kind of stuff that we run across, and not just one case, a lot. You know, if it was this one, I'd shine it on. Whatever happened to the weaponry of the audio rep weaponry, where they could turn it on and people would just go down to their knees? It would hurt them, their ears. Well, that, that's that's very much that's very much alive right now. Um, they they use it on crowd control. That's considered the friendlier um, the friendlier form of of of. Um, you know, crowd control. I mean, I haven't seen it used in the Middle East, so they don't have it, right? Well, they, they, they make it right down here in San Diego, so one of the companies does. Yeah, they will. Well, I mean, we have it. I don't think Oh, yeah, they we have it. Yeah. I've seen it. It's on a big trailer. It has a big antenna, and it works on heat. Um, it, what happens is it goes to like a tenth of an inch under the skin, and so it starts getting really hot. And, and, and so it, this audio beam puts out this heat on the body, and it just, they get so hot, they just burn up, and they just start freaking out. It's not so much the vo- high volume. Yeah, there's a screeching to it, but there's a heat, heat faction that they use on it. Tell me about what, uh, what they're doing with satellites, Fred. Okay. <laughs> Where do you want me to start? <laughs> you, know, the, you know, we started off with the, we started off with the Corona Project a long time ago. That, they were launched from Vandenberg, and that's what, that was spy stuff. And then later on, we came along with the MISTI series which then became like the keyhole satellite, the big, the big launch. The, when NASA got involved was in 91 with the STS-38. Then we have the uh, Iridium satellite, and we had several other satellite companies go up there. And they're, 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 these satellites, that they, I've t- you know, one friend of mine started Iridium. I know the guy very well, and he's retired now. But these satellites not only do things down here on Earth, these satellites, because of different countries being involved, go spy on themselves. They got satellites up there that cruise around and go from one satellite to another monitoring the frequencies that it's putting out and where it's transmitting it to. Huh. Yeah, but what they do, I mean, the first time it came to um, public scrutiny was, I forget the, the incidents, it's, it's, it's the thing in my head, but I remember what happened. It, was it a Chinese satellite that went down, or was it a Russian one? Well, um, it might have been a Chinese one. But the first time that we actually saw the, the RF stuff was getting some birds off a runway at an airport. They beamed in on a bunch of pigeons. And then they admitted that that's what caused these birds to get out of there because they were having a problem. Now, as far as the Chinese satellites, you know, I talked to the director at JPL a while back, and I asked him about when they were launching in North Korea, the satellites, actually North Korea, if we were, um, you know, they'd get, remember they'd get up about a quarter of a mile and blow up? Remember that? Mm-hmm. Okay, I asked him uh, if, if Kim Jong Il's satellites uh, were doing. You know, we were blowing them out of the sky with our with our Star Wars technology, <clears throat> and the guy couldn't um, he couldn't he wouldn't answer that phone. So on the phone, so he, he but the guy that started Radium is the guy that hooked me up to the guy at JPL. And I'm not mentioning names, so he went and got on a secure phone, and I told him because I told him don't BS me. And I've been down this road before, and I'm with a so and so person who actually got him on the phone. So he admitted, yeah, they have a, a technology. Well, it's, it's pretty simple now, but they can they knock things out of the sky with EMP pulses. 
I don't think they lasered that those rockets. I think just knocked that guidance system. This down. sounds like old Tesla technology, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, Tesla was the very first guy. I remember forty seven, um, he had the Tesla something or other, I forget what it was called. But then they came in and they took away from him, you know, they they confiscated his papers and one of the Tesla generators uh, that he one of the Tesla things that he made was the beginning of that of that actual science. It's 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 come a long way now, but they can not only use it on humans, they can use it on animals. They can use it on a computer. They can use it on your car. Of course, you probably know the highway patrol around here in California is developing devices to shut down, you know, electronic ignitions in cars when they're chasing, you know, make car chases safer and all that kind of stuff. So it, it, the, 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 the technology is blossoming all over the place. It really is. Is it good or bad? <laughs> well, if you catch, you know, the other day I saw this horrible crash on a night chase here in Cal, you know, California. I know you're back in the Midwest. No, no, I'm, I'm in L.A. right now. Oh, are you? Okay, yeah. cool. I thought you were back east and Midwest. So anyway, this guy in the, in the crash, he, he broadsided this poor lady, you know, and the cops shouldn't have been chasing him that close. I mean, they were pushing him. And it was middle of, like, 2 o'clock in the morning, he broadsided this lady and it broke her neck and her back. And oh, jeez. Cops didn't even, uh, the, the ambulance came, and they, they, the, the person was dead in the water. They didn't move out of their car, but the person did live because it was on Channel 5 the next day. And that, so to eliminate that kind of ridiculousness, they could have followed this bad guy in a helicopter, you know, and, and got him eventually that way. So from that point, it, it, the technology is good. But unfortunately, with the government uh, programs in place, the depopulation policies in place, you know, they're, they're trying to get rid of people, uh, the deceit that's going on, they're going to use it for, for a bad reason, you know, bad reasons. And that's I, I've always wondered, though, Fred, let me ask you this. I yeah. mean, a guy robs a bank. So you you legitimately know he did this, right? Yeah. Gets in his car, and now he's got this high-speed police chase down the freeway. Right. And, you know, TV cameras are there, so you're watching the thing live. Right. What would be wrong, this is kind of a rhetorical question, if they had a missile system in a helicopter and blew the guy up? Yeah, that would be cool. I mean, he's a bank robber. Maybe he shot someone. I mean, why screw around? 